las cebollas, onions. We're here, said Isabel, as a truck turned into camp and slowed to a crawl. Esperanza stood up and looked over the cab. They were in a large clearing surrounded by great fields. Row upon row of white wooden cabins formed long lines connected with bunkhouses. Each cabin had one small window and two wooden steps that led to the door. She couldn't help but think that they weren't even as nice as the servants' cabins in Avascalientes. They reminded Esperanza more of the horse stalls on the ranch than of the place for people to live. A big mountain loomed in the east, framing one side of the valley. Martha jumped out and ran towards some girls, standing together near the cabin. Esperanza could hear them talking in English, the words hard and clipped, as if they were speaking with sticks in their mouths. They all looked at her and laughed. She turned away, thinking that if Isabel could learn English, then maybe someday she could learn it too. A line of flatbed trucks pulled into a clearing and campesineros hopped down home from the field. People called to one another. Children ran to their fathers yelling, Papi, Papi! Esperanza felt a deep pang. She watched and wondered how she would fit into this world. Isabel pointed to a wooden building off to the side. That's where they have all the toilets. Esperanza cringed as she tried to imagine having no privacy. We're lucky, said Isabel solemnly. In some camps, we had to go in ditches. Esperanza looked down at her, swallowed and nodded, suddenly thankful for something. A foreman came over and shook hands with Juan and Alfonso and pointed to the cabin in front of the truck. The women got out, took the baby, and helped Miguel with the bag. Mamá and Esperanza walked into the cabin. It had two small rooms. One half of the front room was the kitchen with a stove, sink, and counter, and a table and chairs. A pile of wood waited near the stove. Across the room was a mattress on the floor. The back room had another mattress big enough for two people and a tiny cot. In between sat a wooden fruit crate to be used as a night table, its sides touching each bed. Above was another small window. Mama looked around and then gave Esperanza a weak smile. Is this her cabin or Hortensia's and Alfonso's? asked Esperanza, hoping that hers and Mama's might be better. We are all together in this cabin, said Mama. Mama, we can't possibly all fit. Esperanza, they will only give one cabin for each man with a family. There is no housing for single women. This is a family camp, so we must have a male head of household to live and work here. And that is Alfonso. Mama sank to the bed. Her voice sounded tired. He has told them we are his cousins, and if anyone asks us, we must say it's true. Otherwise, we cannot stay. We are next door to Juan and Josefina, so we can adjust the sleeping arrangements. Miguel will sleep next door with them and the babies, and Isabel will sleep here with Alfonso, Hortensia, and us. Miguel came in and set down their valises, then left. Esperanza could hear Alfonso and Hortensia in the next room, talking about the camp office. Mama got up to unpack and began to sing. Esperanza felt anger crawling up her throat. Mama, we are living like horses. How can you sing? How can you be happy? We don't even have a room to call our own. The talking suddenly stopped in the other room. Mama gave Esperanza a long, hard look. She calmly walked over and shut the door to the small room. Sit down, she said. Esperanza sat on the tiny cot, its spring screeching. Mama sat on the bed opposite her, their knees almost touching. Esperanza, if we had stayed in Mexico and I had married Theo Luis, we would have had one choice, to be apart and miserable. Here, we have two choices, to be together and miserable or to be together and happy. Mija, we have each other, and Abuelita will come. How would she want you to behave? I choose to be happy, so which will you choose? She knew what Mama wanted to hear. Happy, she said quietly. Do you know how lucky we are, Esperanza? Many people come to this valley and wait months for a job. Juan went to a lot of trouble to make sure we had this cabin waiting for us when we got here. Please be grateful for the favors bestowed upon us. Mama bent over and kissed her, then left the room. Esperanza lay down on the cot. A few minutes later, Isabel came in and sat on the bed. Will you tell me what it was like to be very rich? She looked at Isabel, her eyes anticipating some wonderful story. Esperanza was quiet for a moment, thinking to one possible thought. Then she said, I am still rich, Isabel. We will only be here until I believe that it's well enough to travel. Then she will come with her money, and we will buy a big house, a house that Papa would have been proud for us to live in. Maybe we will buy two houses so that Arfencia and Fonte Miguel can live in one and work for us again. And you can visit us, Isabel. You see, this is only temporary. We will not be here for long. De veras? 
passes about. Yes, it is the truth, said Esperanza. Staring at the ceiling that someone had covered with newspaper and cardboard, my papa would never have wanted us to live in a place like this. She closed her eyes and heard Isabel tiptoe out of the room and shut the door. The weariness from the days of travel flooded over her, and her mind wandered from people peeing in the ditches to Martha's rudeness to the horse stalls at in Rancho de las Rojas. How could she be happy or grateful when she had never been more miserable in her life? When Esperanza opened her eyes again, it was almost light, and she heard Mama or Dente and Alfonso talking in the next room. She had slept through dinner and the entire night. She smelled café and chorizo. The coffee and sausage made her stomach growl, and she tried to remember when she had last eaten. Isabel was still asleep in the bed next to her. Esperanza quietly pulled on a long, wrinkled skirt and white blouse. She brushed her hair and went into the other room. Good morning, said Mama. Sit down and eat something. You must be starved. At the table, Atencia patted her hand. We missed going to the foreman's office last night. We signed the papers to live here. We already have work today. Mama put a plate of tortillas, eggs, and sausage in front of her. Where did all the food come from? asked Esperanza. Josefina, said Hortensia. She brought some groceries until we can go to the store this weekend. Esperanza, said Mama. You and Isabel will be watching the babies while the rest of us work. Alfonso and Juan will be picking grapes, and Hortensia, Josefina, and I will be packing grapes in the shed. But I want to work with you and Hortensia and Josefina. You're not old enough to work in the shed, said Mama. And Isabel's not old enough to watch the babies by herself. If you watch the babies, then Josefina can work. And that is one more paying job between us. We must all do our part. You will have a camp job too. Sweeping the wooden platform every afternoon, for which they will deduct a little from our rent each month. Isabel can show you what to do later. What's the platform? Esperanza asked. It's the big wooden floor outside in the middle of the camp. Juan said they use it for meetings and dances, said Mama. Esperanza stared at the food. She did not want to be stuck in camp with the children. Where is Miguel? she asked. He's already left for Bakersfield with some of the other men to look for work at the railroad, said Alfonso. Isabel came out of the bedroom rubbing her eyes. Mi sobrina, my niece, said Hortensia, hugging Isabel. Go say good morning to your mother and father before we all leave for work. Isabel hugged her and ran next door. Esperanza studied Mamá as she made un burrito de frijoles for lunch and wrapped a soft tortilla filled with pinto beans and paper. She looked different. Was it the long cotton dress and the big flowered apron tied at her waist? No, it was more than that. Mamá, said Esperanza, your hair. Mamá's hair ran down her back in a single long braid, almost touching her waist. Esperanza had never seen Mamá wear her hair that way. It was always done up in her beautiful plaited button, and when she was ready to bed, brushed out and flowing, Mama looked shorter, and somehow, not herself, Esperanza didn't like it. Mama reached up and stroked the back of her head. She seemed embarrassed. I, I figured out that I can't wear a hat with my hair on top of my head, and this makes more sense, does it not? After all, I'm going to work today, not to a fiesta. Then she hugged Esperanza. We must go now. The truck leaves at 6.30 to take us to the shed. Take good care of the babies and stay with Isabel. She knows the camp. As the three of them walked out, Esperanza noticed Mama reaching up, hesitantly touching her hair again. When Esperanza finished eating, she went outside and stood on the front step. Instead of facing another row of cabins, their cabin was in the last row facing the field. Straight ahead, across a dirt road, were several china berry trees and a mulberry tree that provided deep shade over a wooden table. Beyond the row of trees were great fields, still lush. To the right, across a grassy field, was the main road. A truck piled high with produce drove by, leaving a cloud of debris. After it passed, the sharp smell told her they were onions. The dry outer skin seemed shredded by the wind, and the truck followed. Again, the smell bit into her senses. It was still early, so the air was cool, but the sun was bright, and she knew it would be hot soon. The hands pecked and poked around the front step. They must have been happy to be off the train. Esperanza shooed them out of her way as she turned and walked next door. The babies were still in their pajamas. Isabel was struggling to see the loop of her oatmeal while Pepe crawled on the floor. Splotches of his cereal still stuck to his cheeks. As soon as he saw Esperanza, he reached up for her. Let's clean them up, said Isabel, and then I'll show you the, the camp. 
first exponential to, exponential to the platform. She was to sweep and show her where the booms were stored. Then they walked through the rows of cabins, each with their baby on her hip. As they passed open doors, Esperanza could already smell the beans and onions that someone had started simmering for dinner. Women were dragging big metal wash tubs beneath the shade trees. A group of young boys kicked a ball up and down the dirt road. During up the a little girl wearing a man's undershirt as a dress ran up to Isabel and took her hand. This is Sylvia. She is my best friend. Next week we will go to school together. Sylvia so switched around and grabbed Esperanza's free hand. Esperanza looked down at Sylvia's dirty hand. Sylvia grinned up at her and Esperanza's first thought was to pull her hand away and wash it as smooth as possible. Then she remembered Mama's kindness to the present girl on the train and her disappointment in Esperanza. She didn't want Sylvia to start crying if she were to pull away. She looked around at the dusty camp and thought that it must be hard to stay clean in such a place. She squeezed Sylvia's hand and said, I have a best friend too. Her name is Marisol and she lives in Aguascalientes. Isabel introduced Esperanza to her green and Melina, two women who were hanging close to dry on a long line stretch between the cabins and the tree. Irene had a long gray hair tied in a tail. Melina didn't look much older than Miguel, and she already had a baby of her own. We heard the story of how you came from Aguascalientes, said Melina. My husband is from there. He used to work for Senor Rodriguez. Esperanza's face lit up at the news. He knew my father since he was a boy. Do you think your husband knew Marisol? Senor Rodriguez's daughter, Melina laughed. No, no, I'm sure he didn't. He was un campesinero, a field servant. He would not know the family. Esperanza felt awkward and didn't mean to make Melina admit that her husband was a servant. But Melina didn't seem bothered and began recalling other farms her husband had worked on in Aguascalientes. Isabel pulled on Esperanza's arm. We need to change the babies. As they walked back to the cabin, she said, They are mother and daughter. They come over to talk and crochet with my mother all the time. How do they know all about us already? Isabel raised her hand and made her fingers tap up and down on her thumb as if a mouth was talking. Everyone in camp knows each other's business. Do you know how to change a diaper? asked Esperanza when they got back to the cabin. Certainly, said Isabel. I will change them and you can rinse out the diapers. We need to do some laundry too. Esperanza watched as the young girl laid the babies down one at a time, unpinned their diapers, wiped their bottoms clean, and pinned on fresh diapers. Isabel handed Esperanza the smelly bundles and said, Take them to the toilets and dump them and fill the wash tub. Esperanza held them at arm's length and almost ran to the toilets. Several more onion trucks passed by, their smell costing her eyes and nose as much as the diapers. By the time she got back, Isabel had already filled two wash tubs with water from an outside pipe and was swirling soap around in one of them. A washboard was propped inside. Esperanza went to the wash tub and hesitated, staring into the water. Bits of onion skin floated on the surface of the soapy water. She held a corner of one of the diapers, lightly dipping it in and out of the water, her hand never getting wet. After a few seconds, she gingerly lifted the diaper from the water. Now what? She said, Esperanza, you must scrub them like this. Isabel walked over, took the diapers, and plunged them into the water up to her elbows. The water quickly became murky. She rubbed the diapers with soap, vigorously scrubbed them back and forth on the washboard, and wrung them out. Then she transferred them to the next tub, rinsing and wringing again. Isabel shook up the clean diapers and hung them on the line stretched between the chinaberry and mulberry trees. Then she started on the clothes. Esperanza was amazed. She had never washed anything in her life, and Isabel, who was only eight years old, made it look so easy. Puzzled, Isabel looked at Esperanza. Don't you know how to wash clothes? Hortense took everything out to the laundry quarters, and the servants, they always... She looked at Isabel and shook her head down. Isabel's eyes got bigger and she looked worried. Esperanza, when I go to school next week, you will be here alone with the baby and will have to do laundry. Esperanza took a deep breath and said weakly, I can learn. And later today, you must sweep the platform. You, you do know how to sweep. Of course, said Esperanza. She had seen people sweep many times. Many times she assured herself, besides... She was already too embarrassed about the washing to admit anything else to Isabel. Isabel sat with the babies while Esperanza went to sweep the platform. The camp was quiet, and even though it was late in the day, the sun was unrelenting. She retrieved the broom and stepped onto the wooden floor. 
dried and brittle onion skins were everywhere. In her entire life, Esperanza had never held a broom in her hand, but she had seen Hortensia sweep and she tried to visualize the memory. It couldn't possibly be that hard. She put both hands near the middle of the broomstick and moved it back and forth. It swung wildly. The motion seemed awkward, and the fine dirt on the wooden planks lifted into a cloud. Onion jackets flew into the air instead of gathering together in a neat pile like Hortensia's. Esplanta's elbows did not know what to do. Neither did her arms. She felt streams of perspiration sliding down her neck. She stopped for a moment and stared at the broom, as if willing it to behave. Determined, she tried again. She hadn't noticed that several trucks were already unloading workers nearby. Then she heard it, first a small gentry and then louder. She turned around. A group of women were laughing at her, and in the middle of the group was Martha pointing. La Cincinita, Cinderella, she laughed. Burning with humiliation, Esperanza dropped the broom and ran back to the cabin. In her room, she sat on the edge of the cot. Her face flushed again at the thought of the ridicule. She was still sitting there, staring at the wall when Isabel found her. I said I could work. I told my mom I could help, but I could not even wash clothes or sleep before. Does the whole camp know? Isabel sat down on the bed next to her and patted her back. Yes. Esperanza groaned. I will never be able to show my face. She put her head in her hands until she heard someone else come into the room. Esperanza looked up to see Miguel, holding a broom and a dustpan, but he wasn't laughing. She looked down and bit her lips so she wouldn't cry in front of him. He shut the door, then stood in front of her and said, How would you know how to sweep this floor? The only thing that you ever learned was how to give orders. That is not your fault. Ansa, look at me. She looked up. Pay attention, he said, his face serious. You hold the broom like this, one hand here and the other here. Esperanza watched, then you push like this, or pull it towards you like this. Here, you try, said, holding out the broom. Slowly, Esperanza got up and took the broom from him. He positioned her hand on the handle. She tried to copy him, but the movement was too big. Smaller strokes, said Miguel, coaching, and sweep all in one direction. She did as he said. Now when you get all the dirty pile, you hold the broom down here, near the bottom, and push the dirt into the pan. Esperanza collected the dirt. See, you can do it. Miguel raised his thick eyebrows and smiled. Someday you just might make a very good servant. Isabel giggled. Esperanza could not yet find humor in the situation. Somberly, she said, Thank you, Miguel. He grinned and bowed. At your service, Mirena. But this time his voice was kind. She remembered that he had gone to look for work at the railroad. Did you get a job? His smile faded. He put his hands in his pockets and shrugged his shoulders. It was frustrating. I can fix an any engine, but they will only hire Mexicans to lay tracks and dig ditches, not as mechanics. I've decided to work in the fields until I can convince someone to give me a chance. Esperanza nodded. After he left the room, Isabel said, He called you Mirena. Can you teach me about your life as a queen? Esperanza sat on the mattress and patted the spot next to her. Isabel sat down. Isabel, I will tell you about how I used to live, about parties in private school and beautiful dresses. I will even show you the beautiful doll my papa bought me. If you will teach me how to clean diapers, how to wash, and... Isabel interrupted her. But that is so easy. Esperanza stood up and carefully practiced with the broom. It is not easy for me.